So Megan has started this thing on the channel where she rereads the Percy Jackson books and we kind of, you know, join her along for the journey as she rereads them. And um, the Percy Jackson show is coming soon. It is coming December 20th on Disney Plus. Guys, I got invited to an early screening. So I will be, I will be there. Um, but before that, I do want to reread the book and I haven't reread the books in a long time. So I'm going to be rereading The Lightning Thief. I'm so excited that I got invited to like these cool events promoting Percy Jackson. And um, yeah, this episode is going to be me reliving the first book of Percy Jackson. My love, my heart. Um, so yeah, stay tuned. All right, we're starting off strong. Nothing will beat the long chapters titles. And I have my Percy bookmark and nothing beats this. Look, I didn't want to be a half blood. I'm gonna cry, bro. I'm literally gonna cry. This part about Grover. He walked funny like every step hurt him, but don't let that fool you. You should have seen him run when it was enchilada day in the cafeteria. I love that kid. Bro, I feel so bad for baby Percy. Look. My eyes stung. Here was my favorite teacher in front of the class telling me I couldn't handle it. After saying he believed in me all year, now he was telling me I was destined to get kicked out. Right, I said trembling. He's just a baby. Sally Jackson is the best mother on the planet. Period. I just got back from seeing the show. I got to go to an early screening of the first two episodes in Boston and Uncle Rick surprised us and it was amazing. I'm gonna share some of my favorite moments that I had while reading this book. I literally, I stayed up last night to finish it. And by stay up, I mean not even past midnight because I'm fully in my 20s and have a nine to five at this point. But anyways, <laughs> I finished reading and I took notes of like some of my favorite moments. The episodes are very well adapted. Percy is perfect, very well translated. A lot of it is very like sped up and not accurate to the scenes in here, but you know, it makes sense why they chose to do some things. I have a few of my favorite little moments I'll share with the show. I cannot wait to watch the rest. It's really cute. It's, just, it's, it's everything, so. Did the West die? The gods simply moved to Germany, to France, to Spain for a while. Wherever the flame was the brightest, the gods were there. They spent several centuries in England. All you need to do is look at the architecture. People do not forget the gods. Every place they've ruled for the last 3,000 years, you can see them in paintings and statues on the most important buildings. And yes, Percy, of course, they are now in your United States. Look at your symbol, the Eagle of Zeus. Look at the statue of Prometheus in the Rockefeller Center. The Greek facades of your government buildings in Washington. I defy you to find any American city where the Olympians are not prominently displayed in multiple places. Like it or not, and believe me, plenty of people were not very fond of Rome either. America is now the heart of the flame. It is the great power of the West. And so Olympus is here and we are here. I just thought that was like really interesting about how the gods are in Percy's world at this moment of time. And I don't know, just like the context of it all, you know, the gods are ever changing, but here we are now in America and we got this little boy suffering. <laughs> I just thought it was like interesting that they expanded on like how the gods like moved and became to be in America rather than just being like, oh yeah, you're a demigod, you know? Also what I thought was funny is the way that Percy literally just like kept wondering who his father was after all these water incidents, like boy, you're telling me you don't know? You're telling me that other people don't know? Yes, they were forbidden to not have kids, but also if you hear music in the background, it's the Lightning Thief musical that I'm playing in the living room. This gave me chills both in the book and in the show. My father, I asked, completely bewildered, Poseidon, said Chiron, Earthshaker, Stormbringer, Father of Horses, Hail Percy Jackson, Son of the Sea God. Yeah. And the crowd goes wild. Actually, the people in my theater screaming at everything, crying at everything. It was a great crowd. We got restless waiting for the bus and decided to play some hacky sack with one of Grover's apples. Annabeth was unbelievable. She could bounce the apple off her knee, her elbow, her shoulder, whatever. I wasn't too bad myself. The game ended when I tossed the apple toward Grover and it got too close to his mouth. In one mega goat bite, our hacky sack disappeared, core, stem, and all. <laughs> Grover blushed, he tried to apologize, but Annabeth and I were too busy cracking up. Just a cute little friendship moment that I love. I don't think it like went into my brain 
I mean, I, I read this as a, at a really young age, but these kids are like 12 years old and the adults just sent them out on a quest and they're like camping in the woods, going on an Amtrak alone with no money. I'm like, if I were to see three youngin children like out and about like this, like on the side of a highway by themselves, I mean, I'm a little concerned, you know? So if the gods fight, I said, will things line up the way they did with the Trojan War? Will it be Athena versus Poseidon? She put her head down against the backpack Ares had given us and closed her eyes. I don't know what my mom will do. I just know I'll fight next to you. Why? Because you're my friend, see, we bring any more stupid questions. I love that. I love Persebeth so much. Page 317, this is when they finally get to the underworld and they're trying to decide what they're gonna do with the three pearls to save the people to go back from the underworld. This is Percy going, stop it, both of you. I feel like my heart was being ripped into. They have both been with me through so much. I remember Grover dive bombing Medusa in the statue garden and Annabeth saving us from Zerubers. We both survived Hephaestus' Waterland ride, the St. Louis Art, the Lotus Casino. I had spent thousands of miles worried that I'd be betrayed by a friend, but these friends would never do that. They had done nothing but save me over and over, and now they wanted to sacrifice their lives for my mom. I just like, he is a loyal boy and he loves his friends. And like, I love you, Percy, you know? All right, here's an acute Percy Beth moment. If you know, you know. Percy, Annabeth said, don't do this, he's a god. He's a coward, I told her. She swallowed, wear this at least for luck. She took off her necklace with five years worth of camp beads and the ring from her father and tied it around my neck. Reconciliation, she said. Athena and Poseidon together. My face felt a little warm, but I managed to smile. Thanks. Don't mind if my cat is screaming or my sister's screaming at my cat. I don't know, it's chaos here. This part, this is page 330. This is when Percy is fighting with Ares. Epic moment that I can't wait to see how they do this in the show. I mean, the poster kind of looks like this moment, so. I'm intrigued. A six foot wall of water smashed him full in the face, leaving him cursing and sputtering with a mouthful of seaweed. I landed behind him with a splash and fainted towards his head as I'd done before. He turned in time to raise his sword, but this time he was disoriented. He didn't anticipate the trick. I changed direction, lunged to the side and stabbed Riptide straight down into the water, sending the point through the God's heel. And then, you know, he wants to fight and he's iconic. So he's also just like, so out of pocket. <laughs> It's like, Percy, you're a 12 year old child trying to like defy these gods. Let's take a chill bundle. And he's like, no, like, I love that about him. You know, a little impulsive ADHD boy, but this is page 341 when Percy finally meets Poseidon. Perseus, Poseidon said, look at me. I did and I wasn't sure what I saw on his face. There was no clear sign of love or approval, nothing to encourage me. It was like looking at the ocean. Some days you could tell what mood it was in. Most days though, it was unreadable, mysterious. I got the feeling Poseidon really didn't know what to think of me. What I liked about the show was that Percy was very much so like against the whole gods and and like Poseidon, like well, just like, you know, this father that never like cared about him. I feel like they emphasize that a lot more in the show. And like, you know, the demigods all have like this right to be angry and like, have mommy and daddy issues. Oh, you have mommy and daddy issues. Mm -hmm. Um, but I don't know. I don't know why I ever thought of like Percy as like less like bitter about it. Maybe just cause like Luke was always that character that was like so bitter about it. And like compared to him, it was like Percy was like kind of whatever. But like, I don't know, after seeing the show and like how they kind of like took that like anger within Percy and also just like this quote I just thought it was interesting because it just like gives him more depth, I think, in his relationship. And I know it's like, you know, ever changing and like, he's just a kid in this. I mean, he's just a kid in all of it, but like, I don't know. Just I'm like, hmm, you got daddy issues? <laughs> I don't know, I just can't help but feel sad for like these little demigods, but also it's like, like you always think it's just so cool that they're like sons and daughters of gods, but like, damn, they got it hard too, you know? 
just because I got special powers. Page 353, this is when Sally and Percy finally reunite. And I just love this little this little moment between them. I really did like the show showing more of Sally Jackson's character and her really strong relationship with Percy and they really like were like, okay, Percy, I mean, obviously this was like done in the book, but like Percy wanted, he was just so angry that like his mom was taken and he's like, I'm Sally's kid. Like, I don't care about the gods. I want my mom back. Um. No, I don't know. It's a very special relationship. She kissed my forehead. You'll be a hero, Percy. You'll be the greatest of all. And so he went on to do that. All right, this is the last line of the book, or the last like dialogue of the book. I'll be back next summer. I promised him I'll survive until then. After all, I am your son. And that's it. And I love how the musical did it, the song on that. It's very catchy and I love the musical. If you haven't seen it or listened to it, you should because it's so funny. It's like silly, which is what Percy Jackson is. Um, but like the music is really enjoyable too. This book is just like so iconic if you think about it. Like it's kind of crazy how like iconic their adventures are in this very first book. Like the Greyhound with Miss Dodds, Medusa, the Tunnel of Love, the Arch, the Lotus Casino, Krusty, DOA and Hades, Percy fighting Ares the press following Percy because Percy's like a known criminal throughout the entire book until later and then like Percy just going to Olympus alone being like hey want to help me out iconic great first book of a wonderful series the tv show the two episodes that I've seen so far were lovely I'm really happy with how they adapted it so far and I'm kind of sad honestly that there's only eight episodes I need a million. I can't wait to watch the rest of the show and I kind of want to reread everything too at some point, but we'll see. Love you, Rick. Nice meeting you tonight, even though you, I was probably just a random face in the crowd, but hey, I got a selfie with Rick Riordan. I got to see the Percy Jackson show. I got a bunch of free stuff too. And um, I'm happy with it. Bye.